Hey, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Costumes. Today, I wanna to talk to you about a, a small, tiny, but fun prop detail, or costume detail, from the prequel trilogy, most specifically, Obi-Wan and the Phantom Menace, uh, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. I've mentioned in other videos of mine about how small details matter, whether it's a patch, whether it's a, a type of snap, or buckle, or you name it. It's always something that ends up adding a little more detail, a little more authenticity to your costume, your cosplay, whatever, your collection, anything like that. And sometimes finding an actual source part is the best way to do that. But if you can't, sometimes you have to go back and create it yourself. Now creating it yourself, you can do anything from different materials, and there's so many materials out there now from Warbla to you know wood and Sintra and whatever. But sometimes contacting and doing a group run is a great way to have a, a mass produced item that's fully accurate and fully functional. Now the Obi-Wan buckle is one of those things that everyone wanted to know what it was. When the prequel trilogy first came out, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn were two Jedi costumes that were just completely different from what we had in the original trilogy and we wanted to replicate them as best as possible. One major change in the Jedi costume from the original trilogy was the size of the buckles. Back in those original movies, all we had for reference was Obi-Wan Kenobi and Han Solo and Luke Skywalker's belt, which of course Luke's directly from Return of the Jedi directly, you know, referenced Obi-Wan's, his entire costume re directly referenced Obi-Wan's in, in A New Hope. And so when the prequel trilogy came out, here we have this opportunity for a brand new look at all these costumes and the belts were very different. So one of the major differences was just how it was constructed. Originally they were one piece of leather wrapped around and now they were two pieces. There was a smaller accent belt and a wider belt full of pouches and food capsules and the smaller buckles. Now both Qui-Gon's and Obi-Wan's buckles were very similar as far as shape and size and look. We didn't know where they came from. At least with the original trilogy, you could find similar buckles from Tandy or whatnot. These ones were, who knows where they came from? There was a lot of suggestions and ideas from purse buckles to shoe buckles to you name it there was ideas for it but to this date the date of this video the filming of this video we don't know what it came from we don't know where those buckles even came from in fact young anakin in the end of the phantom menace had a buckle that very similar to qui-gon jinn's so where did they come from you know the basic construction, again, was the middle was big and then the sides came out. Now the most interesting part about Obi-Wan's came a couple years later when a book came out about in 2006 or so, 2005, 2006, that actually showed that the buckle unclasped. Now this was amazing of a discovery. This was an amazing discovery because Anakin's did as, as well. And as you saw in my last video with the Anakin belt, it's just a regular you know, side push buckle, but Obi-Wan's no one knew. So up until this point, there was lots of metal copies. I've owned some myself, and I'm gonna show some pictures here. And it was just an amazing little tiny detail. But now we knew that it was functional. So what do you do? Well, thanks to Dave at saberbelt.com, he actually engineered, or with a group of people, we actually engineered and got the dimensions right and created this buckle to look pretty much exactly the same as the film buckle. Now obviously it's gonna look really small in my hands here, but I'm gonna show the close up right here. And it is amazing. Not only is it amazing, it's got the right thickness, it's got the right details, but it's also functional. It does, you squeeze the top and bottom, you push the basic button that's here, and it pops out just like in the photo I'm gonna show as well. This is a minor, small, detailed buckle, but it is completely, and, and I can't even explain how amazing it is. It's just very authentic. It took so many years to get to this point, and he's been making them for a couple of years now, but it's definitely worthwhile to get. If you want to get one for yourself, the in the description below, you're gonna have a link there. Go there, let him know I sent you. It's a great piece, and if you're a big prequel Jedi fan, and you love Obi-Wan, this is the buckle to get. And again, it's a small detail. It's a small little thing that, granted, some people would look at and say, well, it's not a big deal. You just use something similar, and yes, use something similar. But also, if you're just looking for it to be a little more authentic, looking a little more accurate, or just to have a buckle that actually functions that looks like this, it's pretty amazing. If you have any questions about it, feel free to ask me in the comments below. This is a costume piece that I've been involved with for so many years, and I'm so glad to see it done. Unfortunately, I don't have a belt to put it on yet, but that will be rectified at some point. Uh, but stay tuned for that. I may even have a belt video upcoming for that, for sure. <laughs> for now, if you want to click over here and subscribe, I'm going to have more Star Wars videos and 
as many things as I can talk about, so be sure to subscribe if you want to keep abreast of that. For now, click after this for two other videos that are Star Wars related, and you can check those out. For now, thank you so much for liking, subscribing, for sharing, and as always, thanks for watching.